Hey guys, so here I am in front of Notre Dame and I'm gonna head over to Shakespeare and Company. It's just across the street, but I wanted to give you a little glimpse of Notre Dame. It's obviously still blocked off from the fire, so uh, you can't get up closer or go inside anymore, but there she is.
Hey guys, so as you just saw, I just had some lunch at the Great Canadian Pub. I had some poutine, so good. So if you're ever in Paris and think poutine sounds good, definitely hit up the Great Canadian. So I just did uh, Shakespeare and Company in the Abbey Bookstore and I had some lunch. And I think next I'm going to head over to Word of Rivoli um, by Plaza de Concorde and hit some more bookshops. Let's go. Galignani done. Let's go to Smith and Son, aka W H.
Hey guys, so I just finished at Smith & Son and I think we're all done. We went to Shakespeare & Company, the Abbey Bookshop, Galignani, and Smith & Son. So we got a pretty good tour of the bookshops in Paris and I hope you had a good time. Uh, I'm going to get on the metro and go home and then we'll do a little mini book haul of all the books I got today in Paris. Obviously, it's the next day, but I still wanted to sit down and share with you all the books that I got yesterday at our little tour of bookshops in Paris. So first, we hit Shakespeare and Company. So I got two books at Shakespeare and Company. Uh, the first one you saw that I was debating between two editions of this book. I couldn't decide which one I wanted, but in the end, I went with uh, this edition of The Lost Daughter by Elena Ferrante. So this is about a mom, Lida who her two adult daughters have gone off and started their own lives at university, etc. And so she goes and spends some time on vacation by herself. And it opens with her uh, observing this mother and daughter on the beach and the emotions that that brings up for her. And on the cover it says, a brutally frank novel of maternal ambivalence from the New Yorker. So this should be really interesting about the emotions that are evoked when a mother's children grow up and leave her and what's left for her. I actually started this last night and it's really, really good. And it's a, it's a pretty short book, so I'm looking forward to speeding through this one. I think it's gonna be really good. Next is a book that I've succumbed to uh, thanks to the pressure on booktube, and that is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Mass. Everyone talks about this on booktube. Everybody loves it. And when I saw these editions that, well, we saw it on the bookshelf at Shakespeare and Company, I love the colors of the spines and you know, a good spine, a good cover can sell me on the book. And with all the hype around it, I have to. And right now I'm kind of in a fantasy kick. I'm reading the Game of Thrones series and you know, that's made me realize that I really do appreciate fantasy. So I think that I could get into this, uh, you know, especially because everybody loves it so much. So I picked up the first book, obviously, A Court of Thorns and Roses. I don't think I need to explain too much about what this one's about, so I'll, I'll spare you. But I'm really looking forward to reading this uh, to see what all the hype is about. Also, maybe you can see uh, Shakespeare and Company, they give you a little bookmark. You can see the cherry blossoms outside of Shakespeare and Company. Really, really cool. Also, at uh, Shakespeare and Company, they ask when you buy a book if you want their stamp inside your book. So you can see here the stamp of Shakespeare and Company. Same thing in The Lost Daughter. I got the stamp in The Lost Daughter as well. So it's really fun. It's something special, you know, being able to support this historic bookshop and have a little memory of it in your book. Then I went to the Abbey Bookshop, which is quite close to Shakespeare and Company actually. And as you saw, <laughs> the bookshop is so tight. It's very... I mean, almost claustrophobic. So if you're claustrophobic, I wouldn't recommend, but it's so charming. And they were playing the most charming like jazz music inside. And also the number of people there is so much better than at Shakespeare and Company because at Shakespeare and Company, there's, it's very touristy. And so you're almost body to body with people, even though they, they limit the number of people that go inside Shakespeare and Company. As you saw when I left, there was a line. I arrived early enough that I, I didn't have to wait in line, but if you don't go early enough, you, you have to wait in line. But at the Abbey Bookshop, it's a lot less touristy. So you're you're not squeezed in and that's good because everybody wouldn't fit inside um, because it's, it's so, so, tight and you kind of have to turn sideways to fit through the, the walkways but that that's the charm of the bookshop you know 
So anyway, I, I did take a tour around the Abbey Bookshop looking to see if I could find anything. And they actually have new and used books there. So that's interesting. And I was really surprised by a lot of the books that they had. I actually just bought a lot of the books that I saw at the Abbey Bookshop and I kind of regret that I had bought them online because I would have liked to support the Abbey Bookshop, but I didn't realize that they would have had such new releases, like very new things that I had literally just bought online. So in the end, I didn't end up buying anything from the Abbey Bookshop, but I love always popping in there and getting a feel of the ambiance of that shop because it's so unique. Then I went to the Galignani Bookshop, which is on Rue de Rivoli. So I got two books at Galignani. The first one, as you saw, is actually a children's book. So it's called Paris Hide and Seek, and it's basically a take on Where's Waldo, but Paris edition. So for each on each page, there's a different Parisian monument. So for example, the Louvre. And in the corner, they give you a little bit of information about the Louvre and then tell you something that you're going to have to look for in the Louvre, something connected to the Louvre. So for example, it, it says the most famous one of Leonardo da Vinci's works is the Mona Lisa. Hey, she isn't where she belongs. Can you spot her? And then, so, I mean, it works just like, uh, where's Waldo? You have to find her. You see that she's right here. So, you know, it has uh, all different kinds of monuments, you know. It has the Arc de Triomphe, the Modern Art Museum, the Pompidou, the Paris Mayor's location, uh, which we saw yesterday heading to Shakespeare and Company, Notre Dame, which we also saw. So you see each page has a different Parisian monument and then something that you have to look for in it. And it's so, so cute. I actually got this for my nephew who was recently born uh, in February. So I'm looking forward to doing this with him because I think it's so cute. A good gift idea if you're ever in Paris and want to bring back something for a young reader in your life. The next book that I got at Galignani was The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides. I'm really looking forward to reading this because it's kind of like a modern cult classic. Also, it comes in this new edition to the Collins Modern Classics editions, which are so beautiful. All the spines are really, really beautiful. And I want to get some more of these editions because I think they would look really nice on the shelf together. I think that this book is pretty divisive. People either really love it or really hate it, I think. So I'm looking forward to seeing which side of the fence that I fall on. Down the street from Galignani is Smith & Son, and they just recently changed their name to that. They used to be W.H. Smith for a really long time, but uh, now they're called Smith & Son, so it's possible I accidentally called them W.H. Smith because that's what they've been forever. So I went there next. I got a book that isn't technically supposed to be released yet in Europe. It's been out in the U.S. for, I don't know, a month or two, but the U.K. release isn't until May. So I was really surprised when I found this book on the shelf, and it's the American edition, which doesn't happen very often here. We always get the U.K. edition in bookshops. And so I was really surprised to find the American edition. However, I really don't like the cover of the American edition. I was really looking forward to getting the UK cover when it comes out in May here. But when I saw the American edition on the shelves, I couldn't resist because that means I can read it a lot sooner. I don't have to wait until the end of May to read it. So I, I just accepted that I was going to have to have the American cover. And that is Vladimir by Julia May Jones. Now, I feel like the cover of this book doesn't represent what the book is about. Now, obviously I haven't read it yet, but when I see the cover of this book, it makes me think that it's a romance. It's not a romance, technically speaking. It's literary fiction. I believe it's about a university professor who gets in a relationship with one of her students, but it's not your typical romance. It's more insidious, I think, more not as severe as My Dark Vanessa, because obviously that was with a minor and this is with a university student, so very different there, but in that same vein as My Dark Vanessa, is the way that I understand it. So to me, this cover does not evoke that. And so I was really hoping to get the UK cover, but in the end, like I said, I just accepted to take this cover just so I could read it sooner because I'm really looking forward to reading this and, and seeing um, what the hype is about. So that's what I got at Smith & Son. So in the end, here's my little haul, the five books that I got on our tour of Parisian bookshops, Shakespeare and Company, The Abbey Bookshop, Galignani, and Smith and & Son. So I hope that you enjoyed the little tour of Parisian bookshops, and I hope it gave you some inspiration if you're coming to Paris soon and maybe you wanted to check out some of the bookshops. In the comments below, let me know if you think that I should prioritize one of these books over the others. Also, let me know which bookstore you think that you would choose to go to in Paris first, which one seemed the the most interesting to you that you want to go to as soon as you get to Paris. And I think that that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed your tour of Parisian bookshops. I'll see you next time. Bye.